Hi, this is Tanya again, and this is the third video in this series. It went Khan Academy Class Dojo and now Ed Puzzle. We're going to be talking about this wonderful tool that allows you to do some pretty neat assessment options to our, our videos that we usually use in our class for content or as a, as a link or a resource to help the students do their assignments. Ed Puzzle is a pretty cool tool. I look forward to sharing this with you, so let's get started. So Edpuzzle is a tool that teachers use to instruct virtually. Uh, it take, the teacher takes a video and puts other interactive things within that video to engage the student more with that. So basically they take videos from YouTube or TED uh, and all these other wonderful places online that you can edu get educational videos. And you can also upload your own produced videos to uh, put content in there. So you're putting interactive content into already made videos, whether they're online, supported by YouTube or TED or other uh, organizations, or if it's something that you created yourself and you want the students to engage in. So some of the things that we're going to talk about uh, in Edpuzzle, we're going to create an account. Uh, you um, do have to verify the account and make a lesson where that's the most important thing we're going to do and you can edit the videos i'm going to show you the uh, exceptions to what you can and cannot do within editing videos and uh, you can add a quiz we're going to save and assign the lessons i'm going to add them to a class invite students to participate in that and then at the end i'm going to show you the integration but basically i think the ed puzzle the entire framework of how it exists is the integration. So you can use various different videos to um, utilize in supplementing content within your classroom. So here we are in Edpuzzle. You can go to edpuzzle.com or you can just do a Google search within your Chrome browser for Edpuzzle and um, you can go to the first link that pops up. So if I'm going to sign up, you would tell it what role you're going to play. I'm a teacher, and then you can sign in via Google. So I'm going to choose Google. Now there were some issues with teachers who had accounts that you need to get that code from your district. So if you have paid accounts, if you have something, a certain way that your district is expected to log in, you might want to find that information out first. But you can get an account via your Google, or you can sign up with Edpuzzle directly. So I'm going to hit sign in with Google. It's going to make me verify my account. So I'm going to click on my name and then it's going to hopefully allow me to jump into this with maybe some permissions. No. Okay. It's not going to ask me uh, if it allows my Google account to have connection to Edpuzzle. So this is the first time I've been into this account. So I am going to show you how this basically looks. So when you first go to Edpuzzle, you could possibly be a little confused as to where you should go. Maybe not. Maybe you'll go right where you need to go. But um, the three things that it's going to offer you is content that's already built for you, uh, including your content, and anyone connected in your school district. Um, and then also you have the popular channels that are available. In my introduction, I had talked about um, YouTube and TED Talks, uh, these are the other places that you can get some videos from, popular channels. Uh, the, the second thing you have is a grade book and it's associated with my classes. So if you have nothing in here, it's probably because you have no content and you have no classes because I have neither of those. When you get to my classes, you can choose to add a new class or this is kind of awesome because a lot of districts are using Google Classroom, you can just hit Google Classroom and then you go through the consent portion of continuing and adding. And then it's gonna ask you which Google account you're with and then it's gonna show you your classes. So what I'm gonna do is just add a generic class. This is a pretty easy steppy thing. So if you wanna do your Google Classroom, it's gonna automatically connect to your Google Classroom. So I'm gonna go add a new class and I'm going to name it. And I could put a description if I wanted to, but I don't have to. And then um, I'm going to do a classic type. 
And basically what the classic type does is it has the students kind of interact with the content and then it will have some form of analytical reporting associated with it. Now, I also want to po point out that you can have an import class in here and that's where you walk through that Google Classroom stuff. So now I hit create class. And you can see that my class is added here. Um, I can add another class so I can go in and put the framework of all of my classes in here. If I have a section of students who come and go and there's different students in each class, then I would create a new class for each of those. I don't want to just chunk all of my students into one. So I would generate a class for each of my sections when I meet with students. So in here I can invite uh, my students or again I can um, lock and unlock my classroom after I have my students in there but I'm going to invite students and I can do that through um, the consent here and then I can copy a link have the students copy the link I copy the link and put it in my Google classroom I can share via email if I have a messaging system set up with my students um, or I can just have my students join the class uh, through the link and through the join code there. Very simple. Class options. I can rename it. I can put a description in. I can generate a new code. A lot of times uh, school districts do this when the code has been leaked or something of, of sorts has been done that's uh, questionable to that. So you reset it or, uh, and that's also why you lock your course as to your lock your classroom. So that's the way to create a classroom and then generate a code to be able to add those students to your classroom. Now, since I've already done the permission thing, it's going to allow me to directly connect to one of my Google Classrooms. So I'm going to show that option of add new class, click on Google Classroom, and this is the window that I told you it would show us. It's going to ask me which account I'm associating with my connection to Edpuzzle, and then it's going to generate uh, an allow message here and I'm going to click allow and then it's going to show me my courses. So when I have those lists over here I can choose which classes I want to have connected to my uh, Edpuzzle. So what I'm going to do is click on this one and maybe this one and then I'm going to import. So it will import all the students uh, connected to those classes. So now that those students are in there, it gives me the option of import students. I can select specific students and import. I can also select all, and then I can do some things like remove from class and, and things like that. When you hit import students, it's going to import all my students from Google Classroom in there. Uh, so now those students are part of this class. Another option is the dot 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 next to each student. I can edit names, reset password, or remove them from the class. So that's the My Classes portion of Edpuzzle. So the content is the main reason you want to be in Edpuzzle. The uh, built-in things that are already done for you. So I could just select one of these. Um, I could edit, I could copy it. It's going to be con uh, connected to my content. I could preview it by clicking on the play button. And when I go in there, it's going to walk me through each of these. Now, when I'm looking at this content, this is a video uh, that was added into uh, YouTube from YouTube and then questions in these areas or content in those areas. And you also have the playing option of full screen, mute uh, and that kind of stuff. So I'm gonna just hit play. And even over here it shows the to-do, multiple choice, multiple choice, multiple choice, multiple choice all the way down there. So it tells me at which minute that's going to happen. These days, it seems like everyone is making money on the side. You're
five things you need to know to make sure that your side hustle won't be hustling you. So this is what happens when a question comes up. It pauses it, it um, pull, pulls the question up on the side. What are the two reasons people start a side hustle? And so then you would select those. And since I didn't watch the video, I'm going to um, just guess. And oh, what are two reasons? And that's my fault. So I had one of them, right? And now it continues. On. So over here, I can choose to edit this one if I want to take out certain questions or put, put certain questions in. And this gives us the view of what we're going to have when we create our own. So after I've chosen a video, I can click on edit. And when I click on edit, it's going to take me to this place where I can do some cuts by moving around the video line, the playhead. These days, it seems like. So if I move the playhead over here, takes a minute, but it'll jump there. And I can hit add a cut. So I can add cuts to this video. I can also squeeze in or edit the beginning and the end. And if I do a cut, I could also delete the video at the end. So if I make a cut, I can do some edits in the middle, but it's a little bit tricky. I can always undo and reset if need be. I just move my playhead to a certain place. I add a cut and then I can alter that video and then delete it. So I'm taking out of the middle. Printing a storage space. Each book will have. Now all I'm doing as I pull these in is I'm dragging them all the way to one side so I click, hold, and drag, and then as soon as I drag it far enough, it allows me to delete it. So I can, uh, you know, delete at the beginning, the end, and the middle. If I want to work, uh, if I don't like the voiceover that's on there, if I want to edit that a little bit, I can go into the voiceover portion, and I can start recording what I want to place over that video. Same thing with questions. I can add some questions. Basically, I just move to that portion of the video. And then I hit the multiple choice question, open ended or a note so I can add notes in there as well. If I want to edit a question that's already there, all I would have to do is click on the type of question. And then I'm able to edit or delete or continue. When I'm finished editing, I can hit finish. And now it's saved all of my edits that I've done, kind of squished it down. So now I can assign it, duplicate it, or delete it. So if I want to assign it, it's going to bring up my classes. And I can assign it to all three of them. I can also add a new class through this way. And then I can also get a public link and or an embed link, and I could put that on my Google Classroom that would allow the students to interact with it as well. So in the content area, I can either grab something that's already been done by someone else, and I can narrow those down based on who's produced those. But if I really want to get good with my content, I go to my content and I can search. And then any videos that are in my content will come up that are with fractions, but I don't have any fractions. So I'm going to hit add content to be able to create my own fraction lesson. So when I hit add content, I have the option of creating a video, upload a video, student project or new folder. So I could organize my things in folders, but I'm going to hit create a new video and I'm going to find something that I like. And I could filter them by subject. So I'm going to do um, internet safety. I know I said fractions, but I changed my mind. So I have this video that I found, and now I can edit it and then assign it. So when I want to edit it here, basically I just want to add my own voiceover 
before I want to add my own questions, which is the same way if you're creating your own content as opposed to using the content that's out there um, already created. So I can hit multiple choice and then I just fill in the box with their little mini editors here. Um, first choice, second choice, type your choice. This is the real answer. And I could switch that to where I could make that the correct answer and that's the, the incorrect answer. If I want to change the name of what originally someone named it, five internet safety tips for kids, I can click the edit and then I can highlight in there and change whatever I like about it. And again, when I'm finished with this, I'm gonna hit finish and I'm all good to go. So if I wanna change things specific to my content that I'm producing or using or borrowing, assigning in Edpuzzle, I can go over to my Google icon up here and I can choose my name. And when I choose my name, I have profile settings, school, and plan. And this is how you can tell if you have a paid plan. If I go to my profile, it shows I'm connected to Google, my password. If I go to settings, it allows me to do minimal things here, but I can prevent skipping. Students will not be able to skip videos and questions. And then I can turn on or off the closed captioning. Uh, and then I also can get updates about my puzzle usage. I don't really care for that and I don't want to know about their latest news so I'm going to deselect that as well. You can see it's a little bit difficult to get that clicked. And then I'm going to go to school and I can put the upgrade code in there depending on which district you're at. Uh, and then I can change all my stuff based on uh, learning management system that we use and or the subject that I teach. So on the ad content, the first one we chose was create a video. I can also upload a video that I've created. I can choose it from my Google Drive or just choose a file to upload from my computer. I think both of those are helpful based on the fact that um, even Google doesn't connect to its own Google Drive through YouTube uh, and that kind of stuff. So this is pretty impressive. So it's gonna upload this video and I might actually stop that because I've got too many things going on already, but I'm uploading my own video to be able to add things to it. So uh, the edit option will be available there. So when I find the thing that I want, I click on it and then I can edit it and I can edit the video by cutting it, add a voiceover or doing some questions. So when looking at the questions, I can do multiple choice, which also includes true and false. So you can put true or false, yes or no, anything that gives you the option of selecting which one is true. Um, and I, it looks like I can do multiple ones. So you can add another answer choice down here. I would type in these mini editors uh, and then I can say this one's wrong, these two are right. So it almost mimics a little bit of a checkbox option for that and you could see when I took that first practice test through something I found in their content that I was able to choose two. So choose the two best and I didn't read that and messed up on that. So um, open-ended questions are like short answer and then um, note is the thing where I can add a note and I can also use audio there as well. So I wanna say allow on that but now it's recording me and I'm adding something directly to this note. I click on that and then I have the option of saving or canceling. I'm going to save that. I'm not even quite sure what it's going to sound like, but um, that's how you can add audio uh, to a note that's already in your Edpuzzle. So after I've assigned a specific interactive lesson to my students, I can go into the student option of that video that I've made available to them and I can see how much they've watched and if they've turned anything in connected to the interactive content. So that's Edpuzzle. I hope you learned a lot from this instructional video, um, all the different places that you can go and change settings. The one thing that I did notice, and I edit video a lot in my career, so the editing wasn't all that easy. If you just remember to drag until it shows you that trash can, then you can delete beginning, middle, end of anything it's uh, with that split cut kind of thing or um, create a cut option in there so um, 
If you have any questions, of course, you can um, email me at sanders at nwoet.org. Uh, and we're going to continue on with the next video in the series. Thanks.